Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of the series within the digital adoption show that we call DAP Upskill, the podcast where we unravel the mysteries of digital transformation across various departments within any organization. I'm your host, Arya, and in today's episode, we're diving deep into the strategies that sales engineers employ to customize DAP for the unique needs of the customers coming from different industries and how this leads to maximizing client ROI. We have a special guest with us today, Raj Nair, a seasoned sales engineer at Podfix. With his wealth of experience and insights, Raj is here to shed light on the fascinating world of digital adoption platforms. But before we get into the nitty gritty of DAP customization, we want to understand the driving forces behind the individuals who make it all possible. The sales engineers themselves, We'll explore what it takes to thrive in this field, the love that fuels their passion and the challenges that they face. And of course, we won't stop there. We'll delve into the perceptions of DAP across various industries, the diverse requirements that clients bring to the table and the crucial aspect of userization. How do these professionals ensure that DAP is user-friendly for all types of customers? We'll discuss that. What sage advice does Raj have for those considering taking a leap into the world of digital adoption is also something we will get into. Join us as we uncover the secrets to successful DAP customization with Raj Nair, right here on the Digital Adoption Show. Welcome Raj, welcome to the Digital Adoption Show. We are so excited to have you and I'm sure it's going to be an episode full of learning, full of insights for our listeners. How are you feeling? How are you doing today? I'm good. It's been it's a it's a bright and cold morning, but it's good. Um, excited for this. This is I think we've been talking about this for a while, and there's some really interesting topics to talk about. So yeah, thanks for having me. It's amazing, amazing. So let's just start by can you like tell us a little bit about yourself? How you got into this field? What what do you love about your job? What are some challenges that you face as a sales engineer? Yeah, DAP was relatively new to me as well when I. Uh, joined. I think a lot of uh, folks who end up working in DAP uh, kind of share that experience. So I come from, I'm a mechanical engineer by education, and I come from very core technical background that way. But I've always worked in software and done sales uh, as part of that, pre-sales as well. So yeah, that's where I come from. What fix, you know, kind of fell into my lap in terms of, I wasn't really looking out for DAP per se. And I, as I said, I had no idea about DAP for this. But once you find it, I think it kind of flips a switch in your brain. The most beautiful thing about this technology is it's it's such an obvious thing. It's right there in front of you, but you've never really thought about it until it, you know, until you see it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure a lot of us, when we are new to it, I'm sure all of us felt that way. I, um, I I came from the same place that you are coming from. I'm an engineer myself. Even coming from a technical background, I did not know about this. But then now that I got to know, it, it it's right there. Like we see, we come across it every single day, but we just never think of it as, you know, a different thing. It's a part of the process. And it's, it's a nice thing that it's getting the recognition that it should because it's important. It's very, it's an integral part of every software, every application that we use on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get into this. And because of that, it's easy to also explain it to people, not just for customers, but, you know, even in layman terms, just to tell tell someone what the technology does. Yeah. Everyone who's used a banking application and try, uh, trying to log into their banking portal yeah. probably relates to this. And, you know, the, uh, the ability to use software and this, it goes so, so broad. So in that sense, I think it was an easy transition for me. So in terms of what I do here, I think uh, everyone plays different roles in respect to who we are talking to. So let's say in terms of my customers, my role is to help them make an educated decision about why this technology makes sense to them, what kind of problems it solves for them. Some Sometimes they might not know that a problem exists. Yeah. And in that sense, kind of hand-holding them towards the recognition of that problem. I like to think of it as like a if you ever ever been a coach or a teacher for someone who's new. So let, let's say I know a friend who teaches yoga for like seven, eight years now. Mm-hmm. And all she does is she teaches just beginners. She doesn't teach 
anyone who's intermediate or advanced, you only teach as beginners. And she's been doing that for eight years. So I asked her, how do you motivate yourself? Yeah. And what she told me was when you teach, continue to teach beginners, you see that, you know, recognition that they get at the beginning of, oh, this is so much fun or, or this is so, so valuable. And that's what I see in my customers. A lot of my customers who come to this are very new and they just have no clue about what, what the AP can do to them. And once you start telling them about it and once it starts clicking, that experience of them going through the recognition of what the technology does for them is very similar. So that's what makes me motivated to do it. It's like I can keep doing this continuously for new and new people and it won't stop being fun because yeah. you just see that light bulb moment for them and that's just very uh, rewarding that actually is very rewarding you know we're talking along the lines of what i was going to ask you next which is you deal with people on a day to day basis right and so how do they perceive that like i'm sure you have some instances or some fun interpretations that maybe people have made of dap when you've tried to explain them what it is yeah i mean it depends on who you talk to so that there, we work with a wide range of customers i mean personally i focus a lot on uh, hr domain and hr related customers but i'll give you a few examples recently i was working with a company that makes software for behavioral interventionists what yeah. that means is someone who goes to houses and meets autistic kids so for them you might not think like where where does dap come into picture but what they do on a day to day basis is use technology in front of someone who needs help and they really need to make sure that the technology is helping them do their job yeah right so in that situation making sure that it's personalized making sure that it's not tech heavy and that they get that help when they need it is super important and that gives and those kinds of examples i've done uh, i've seen similar things with doctors in you know optician clinics i've seen it with auto part manufacturers you know if you go for a car servicing people there use technology so what i've learned over time in this is there's different domains where people need to use technology in different ways and dap can touch their each of their lives uh, obviously we can go through examples like finance and hr where it's a much more corporate use case uh, but what i've found more interesting are the more day to day use cases where we usually don't think that they can this can really be impactful yeah i had no idea that the user case could be such a broad thing that you deal with on a day to day basis okay yeah. that that's actually very interesting that's new information for me also so yeah. uh, coming back to dap recently you know heard about this word called data driven dap can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what is data driven dap or like the importance of data while implementing dap yeah so let's look at that example that i just took which is we're trying to help someone who's doing an assessment for autistic kids and they want to use the technology our goal with dap is to make their life easy and you know nudge them at the right points make sure that they enter the right things when they need to and be able to use that software really well how do we know where they need help you know like how do we know how they're using that software and how do we know where they're making mistakes yeah so the crux of data driven dap is about knowing your user before you change their behavior or before you give them the support that they need because yeah. usually in traditional approaches of dap and this is part of the evolution of the uh, industry as well traditionally we would uh, usually when a customer an lnd team comes to us and says hey we need to implement dap assuming they know about it their first thought is let's just take the traditional things that we already have like a pdf which tells them how to use that software or how to do this process and let's convert that into a digital interactive walk through for yeah. the end user which works pretty well in a lot of instances but what it doesn't do is or what it involves is an assumption that we know what the user is already struggling with and we are just trying to solve for that problem so what with data driven dap you what you're doing is you're starting from a point of saying that i want to know what the user is actually doing so let me understand the user's behavior on that software so it could be any of those softwares we talked about how are they exactly going through each of these processes in the software itself 
without having any help in the first place? How are they, where are they dropping off? Where are they struggling? Why are they struggling? And who is struggling? Right. So once you know all of these things, once you have a much better understanding of who your user is, you now have a way more data backed decision to make that, okay, I know that this user is struggling on this feature at this time and they belong to this region or they have this role. Based on all of that, you can be very tailored and very targeted. So in that example that I took, not every interventionist needs to see a pop-up uh, when they enter like the details of their patient. It might be just one or two. So giving it to the right people at the right time can make a lot of difference because otherwise it can become annoying as well. If you, if you see something that you don't need to see, it completely defeats the purpose. So the, that's the crux of data-driven DAP. It's to understand your user, and then serve them based on that. I mean, it is a solution at the end of the day, right? You need to find out who your target is, what is his problem, what kind of solution can be built for this specific persona, and then mm -hmm. around that. So, okay, this is basically we're getting into the direction of userization only. We've discussed userization yeah. earlier on this podcast. So let's just touch up on that again. How important do you think as a sales engineer that userization is and how is it helping your customers? Why do you think it has to be customized for every user case? Yeah, it's because at the end of the day, when you're trying to help someone, yeah. you want to make sure that you know what help they need. Otherwise, you're just assuming that this is the help they need and you give it to them. It might not actually end up being helpful. It's not helpful. So, yeah. So uh, you got to know what the user really needs and what they, and this is, I mean, in general, when you're trying to help someone. So with userization, it goes hand in hand with data-driven app. Userization in a, a sense is about personalizing the experience to every user so that we are talking to them, you know, directly to that person, not to them, them as a nebulous, but as an individual who needs a certain kind of help. And the only way you can do that is by first tracking, understanding what their behavior is, where they're struggling, and go on and create something, take an action on that. I, I, I think a good way of explaining it is through example. So one good example that I had the opportunity to work with was, obviously, we, we can't get into specific details, but there's this cybersecurity platform that the customer was using, and they wanted to understand how can they help their marketing team see what the user is doing and adequately show them the right maybe upselling or cross-selling messages. So this can be very useful. I'm sure every company, every organization is trying to look at the usage of their products and be able to tell when there's an opportunity to upsell or cross-sell and so on. In that instance, what you can do is you can figure out exactly which features your end user or your customer ended up using, exactly which features they showed interest in, but they didn't actually end up using. So there's different nuances of the behaviors you could look at. And based on that, you can, you know, show a targeted message. Think of it like when you log into your banking portal uh, and sometimes you get these messages for, oh, would you like to sign up for this credit card? That is userization talking to you, yeah. right? That is basically looking at what you did, looking at your overall behavior in the software, maybe clicking on, you might have maybe looked at some other offers in, the, uh, in that space. Yeah, and yeah. so based on that, they're able to not just understand what you might need, but also take an action on it. So this is where what fix or DAP goes one step further than just analyzing what the user is doing. But okay, based on that knowledge, can I talk to them? Can I give them the next recommendation? Another good example before I pause is in HR, people analytics is a very common thing these days. A common example of people analytics, very relevant one is how companies decide, do we want to go hybrid versus do we want to go a remote or in office? Some companies, what they've done is they've tried to understand what the employees prefer in terms of their behavior. So you can understand their calendar management and try to see if they have to put a lot of focus hours when they're in the office versus when they're not. And you can look at feedback from them, implicit or explicit feedback. And all of this can be used to then send them a message, you know, uh, talk to them and say, 
hey, we see that you have uh, too many focus hours. Is it something that you would like to talk to? Uh, you know, from an HR's point of view, the HR can communicate with the employees directly, but not just because they have a policy, but because the, you know that this employee is struggling because of their workload management. So once again, the way userization works in that instance is you are specifically looking at certain people based on their needs and then addressing that need. Okay. All right. That was amazing. My next question was going to be around this only as to, you know, how do you ensure that DAP is user-friendly for everyone who's using it? But like you said, it's all data-driven. Like you do an analysis before building the product for each and every one, which you answered my question right there. Um, the next thing I wanted to know from you is now that we've discussed userization, data-driven building of DAP, what what are some things that Watfix is coming up with? What are some DAP innovations going on in Watfix? Or what are the newer things that you are doing after looking at everything that people usually do struggle with? Yeah, so one of the things is, as we talked about, being able to communicate even when they're not in a certain application. So oftentimes DAP, when folks think of it, they think of it in the context of, oh, when someone is using an application, I want to be able to help them which obviously is the core of the technology. But what if they're not using an application? What if, let's say we have new hires who come into the organization and the IT team usually would sends them a laptop. And when we open it up, we have this huge list of you know Excel sheet items that we have to go through and complete. And we are often lost. We are like trying to talk to our managers and trying to figure out who to talk to. What if you can communicate to them right on their laptop? Think of it like how your phone has Siri that you can talk to and say, hey, I don't know where this is. Can you help me or ask any questions? What if you can do that on your laptop? So what I'm getting to is that there's been a recent push towards what we call WhatFix Hub, which is being able to communicate at a system level rather than at an application level. So when in that example, the HR example, let's say you want to do IT orientation. When I open my laptop for the first time as a new hire, I can be invited into that system and be said, hey, welcome to WhatFix. Here's a few things we would like to take you through. And these are the things that we would want you to do so to set up your system and set up your logins and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Instead of an Excel sheet, you're basically being guided as if someone's standing next to you, like the HR is standing next to you and just taking you through that. It's a very, per again, once again, all of this is data driven. So it's yeah. very personalized, very tailored. So you all, the, the, the experience of being, you know, going through a journey of anything, it could be a, being a new hire onboarding, it could be doing an assessment, an autism assessment, it could be at a, a retail shop for a tire manufacturer, whatever it might be, whatever experience you're having through the software, you can do all of that at a system level so that you feel that someone's standing next to you and That's guiding you through. Actually very helpful, especially for people who are new joining. It's like... Yeah. everyone is clueless on the first day like they really really don't know who to go to what to do. it's just the hr that they're sitting with or you know maybe like someone who's their onboarding manager or something like that but if you can save all those resources and just have something like this on your laptop itself who's guiding you it, it it's like a good first day experience and that's when you when you're inviting someone into your company and asking them to work for you, you need to give them that comfort starting from the first day itself. Exactly. And I love the word you, that you use, like making them comfortable in that system. And you can use that for that paradigm for a few other roles in that same thing. So let's say you're trying to make the employee comfortable. What if the manager is new? Like he, he or she is a new manager and they have no idea how to help them file an expense report or how to order them a laptop, like the, their employees a laptop or something like that. Being able to once again, communicate to them or let them know those things on this other system level. So usually what would happen if I wanted to order a laptop for one of my employees, I'd have to go to the HR system, log into that, find my way through all, all of that. Hopefully there's DAP on that system so I would be able to find it. But it basically means I need to be on some software to do that. What if I don't have to do that? What if I can just be on my laptop and just ask my Siri or, you know, an equivalent of that and say, hey, I need to order a laptop for my employee. This is, these are the details. Can you help me with that? And 
what if Spotfix can basically take that information, go to that relevant application where that process is and do it for you without you having to even be in that application. It's like having a personal assistant on your laptop. Pretty much. So like uh, even on our phone, like think of how we use our phones uh, every day. We look, we have a notification hub, we go through it and we see, okay, this is what I need to do today. Maybe I don't need to, I'll just swipe, swipe it off. Maybe this is something I need to do. So let me click on it, do that. Same thing. Imagine if it was on your laptop. When you, when you log into uh, every day on, for your work, you open your laptop, you see that, okay, these are the notifications I have for this. Maybe something is in workday, something is in my you know sales system, something is in my marketing system. And I can decide if I need to go to that or not. If I do, I can then go into that application and then continue the DAP experience there. But so that's the thing. It just, it doesn't have to be application dependent. That makes sense. Amazing. I, th- this is this this could be revolutionary. I feel like this is this is something so new. I, the first time I'm hearing of someone trying to do this with people, and especially with new employees. I feel like this is such a great thing. It it resolves so many issues that you're facing mentally, emotionally, all of it. Like if there's someone to help you, <laughs> it helps in all ways possible. I really think so. I bet. Like I I feel like we've hit a nerve somewhere there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> okay, so one last technical question that I have for you is that with different types of clients that you deal with, right? Like you just said, maybe the retail system, maybe the manufacturing sector, maybe the health sector. What are the different mm-hmm. kinds of requirements that those clients come up with? Is there is that like different requirements according to the set of industry that they represent? Or is it something a little more general than that? Yeah, it's a very good question. So it depends on, so there, there's two parts to that question. One is the kind of industry you're dealing with and the kind of people in that industry you're dealing with. So let's let's take those two to one by one. So in terms of the industry, yeah, absolutely. The, the, the way each industry works can define the way they look at DAP. So one example is, as I mentioned, retail banking. Retail banking or finance in general, as you can imagine, they're very, very, uh, you know, privacy first approach. Like they want to make sure everything that they do has the user's privacy at its forefront. So when we go in and, you know, pitch an idea for a DAP solution, first thing they they think about is, okay, what's being read? What is being passed on to what fix? And how are they storing it? And, you know, all of that. So that can uh, again, that doesn't mean that they're not open to the idea, but it's something that they come with as a initial uh, layer of scrutiny. Another one, and this is something that I previously did, as I mentioned, I was a mechanical engineer. So I used to work in really, we call it simulation. So think of something like when you design a car, you have to simulate airflow around it. So I used to work in that industry, which was very software heavy, very technical in those industries, the user experience of those softwares are pretty bad, but that's not the priority. For them, the priority is to make sure that the design of that car goes through and you're able to get the right design correctly. And a lot of those people who use it are such subject matter experts in that, like they are so software minded, they don't even realize that the UX isn't that great. So in that, you have to educate them. They don't even see that there is a UX problem until someone new comes into that role and they're like, okay, I have no clue how to use the software. So that industry, there's no data issue. They're not saying, oh, we need to go through InfoSec. They're saying that we don't even know if there is a problem here. So depending on the industry, they'll have certain traditional ways of doing it. So some of them are so traditional, they it's a very hard sell to even make them realize that it could be a very beneficial for them to have a digital transformation. That's for the industry. In terms of people, now, let's say someone comes comes to us, you know, I think the, the, the mechatronics, the manufacturer example that I mentioned, the person who came to us was a product person, not an L&D person. Okay. So, right. So in that case, what their thought process with something like this is not necessarily to you know train someone or give them support but understanding can i know my product better can i know my product usage better so depending on the 
person who you're talking to, their need would be different. So for a product person, it's the ability to change things on their product using product knowledge and somewhat DAP as well. So that's where the analytics part of WhatFix comes into play. A lot of product managers like to use WhatFix to just understand how someone is using their product and where they can improve their product per se, not to necessarily nudge the user, but to actually change the product. Yeah. Whereas if I talk to an L&D person, they don't have that much control on the product. They can't change the product. So they're thinking about changing the user. So for them, the AP is to, to have that control that they otherwise wouldn't have from a product standpoint and use that to nudge the user, give them what they need and you know have some control that way. Whereas if you talk to a business person who's either not in the training program or the L&D program, neither are they in a product role, but they're making higher level decisions for them. They would love to understand the metrics from a much overarching point of view. So when you talk to them about having a process walk through and things like that, that's great. But what's my KPI that I'm getting to? Like how many rounds of training that I can avoid? How many rounds of product releases can I avoid? Essentially, they overarch the, the other two personas, but they're looking at a much higher level. So it depends on who you talk to and you have to adapt to that. Okay. All right. So I just have one last question to you. You know everything in and out about DAP, the type of customers who we cater to, the type of solutions that you build for them. So what is mm -hmm. one piece of advice that you would have for anyone who's taking off making this leap into their business with DAP? Yeah, I mean, I keep coming back to knowing your user. You know, I think anyone who is thinking about how can I change my user's experience or improve their experience? And DAP is a means to that. And so some people might know it, some people might not know it. And then that's our job to educate them about it. But even if you are thinking about improving your user's experience and that might be a means to it, I, I recommend folks to think about knowing what that user experience is because knowledge of that can guide you to make the right decisions. It could be to improve your product. It could be to nudge the user, which is what a lot of the traditional DAP solutions are. But either of that depends on what your user experience is right now. So being able to know that user experience is probably the first thing you should do. A lot of people do, and you know, a lot of the folks do actually uh, try that with explicit feedback. So you do see with most products, you'd have surveys going out that you would have to fill out that give you some end user uh, feedback, but it's very anecdotal. So having real time feedback of your user's experience on your product, or it could be internal product, external product, doesn't matter. I'd say start uh, with that mm -hmm. and it will lead you to DAP eventually. Amazing. So I don't have any more questions for you. <laughs> that, that is the end of this episode. I, I genuinely learned a lot. You told me so many things that I, I did not know. So I can only imagine how much of it other people know from... You know, people who are not from this space, but it's but it's all very, very interesting and exciting. And I hope the next laptop I get, I need a laptop with <laughs> Siri on that laptop for sure. I need my first day when I'm overriding with confidence. I want that to be my first day. <laughs> yeah, first of all, I, I appreciated this conversation as well. As I said, I completely resonate on that thought, which is I feel like that coach that sees a new beginner every time and every beginner is different. They bring in a different need. They bring in a different context. They have a different background and it's about making them mold into what they need to get to. And you are just part of that process. So it's, as you said, like there's so many different use cases, so many different avenues this can touch. And that's what makes it really interesting. Rewarding at the end of the day. If your job is fun. It's rewarding. And you're bringing change. You're really bringing change into how people work and making their lives easier. Absolutely. Kudos to that. <laughs> that's it's a good point to end on. Uh, yeah, that's really well, well put. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for being on the show. And I hope we get to host you again sometime. 
Hey, anytime. I'm sure I would love to hear more about your onboarding experience. Seems like I've pretty much hit a nerve there somewhere. So I feel like yeah. there's a lot more to talk about that. <laughs> but no, happy to come back anytime. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye, Raj. Thank you all for listening. Stay tuned as we bring you fresh perspectives every week on the Digital Adoption Show. We are thrilled to announce that our podcast is now live on multiple platforms, including YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and much more. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes filled with insightful conversations. We greatly appreciate your support and encourage you to leave a comment, review, or a rating to help us continue delivering valuable content. If you have any questions on the topic, feel free to ask in the comment section below. Thank you.